Hello, welcome to the Kitchen Spy. My name is Kate and this is another recipe. And uh, this week it's a, a new recipe. I've never tried this before, before I cooked it um, for this uh, video. So I put full faith in Mary Berry because this is yet again another Mary Berry recipe. This is from her complete cookbook, which has got over 650 recipes in it and is fabulous. Um, and it's um, actually one that's published by uh, D. K, which is one of the cheaper book um, publishers. Uh, so I don't think it was terribly expensive, but it's really useful book. Um, so yeah, this is Latimer beef. And what attracted me to the recipe in the first instance was that um, it had got some really unusual flavor combinations in, as we'll see when we have a look at the um, ingredients. But I have to say, this is one of the best beef dishes I have ever eaten in my entire life. It was absolutely gorgeous. Okay, so let's have a look at the ingredients. So we have two teaspoons of mild curry powder, two teaspoons of light muscovado sugar, and one teaspoon of ground ginger. Then here I've got two teaspoons of mixed herbs. Now the recipe called for fresh parsley, but I don't have that, so I used that. And then we've got here three and a half tablespoons of creamed horseradish sauce. Um, and I used this one, uh, I just got that from the local shop, um, the horseradish sauce by Coleman's. And then here beef, again this was from the local shop and it came in two packets and this actually weighed in at about 764 grams which is about 27 ounces. Then a really large onion, uh, chopped up quite quite big, not, not very fine, and that came in at 232 grams or about 8 ounces. Then I've got 25 grams of Dove's gluten-free plain flour which is just under an ounce. And then a very full to the brim uh, little glass of Worcester sauce, which is two tablespoons. And then stock wise, I've got um, a Noor beef stock pot made up to 500 ml or just under a pint. And then uh, I've got salt and pepper. And these ingredients made for very generous portions. Um, you could probably make six out of this, but we just, uh, we're quite greedy. So we got four out of that. Then over in the pan, just um, another few sprays of oil. Again, I keep saying this, but um, I just am trying to save calories constantly. But if you're not, then uh, just use a slug of olive oil or whatever you want to use here. So I'm just using a few sprays of this. Um, you also need to preheat the oven to 160C, 140 fan or gas mark 3. So what we're going to do first of all is brown off the meat. So I'm just popping the meat pieces uh, as far apart as you can get them into the pan. Um, so you need to do this in a few batches because if you don't do it in a few uh, batches then um, they don't really fry, they just boil in their own kind of liquid. So yeah, just be patient over this bit and as you um, brown each batch off and as you can see I've just finished one here and there's lots of brown on the bottom of the pan but as usual we don't worry about that then we just um, put those into the dish that you've got waiting and you just carry on with the rest of the beef so in between each batch I'm just giving it another few sprays of the oil I think if you'd used more oil in the first place you possibly wouldn't have to do that but because I just used a few sprays um, it's not the end of the world to add a few more um, so just make sure that all of the beef is browned off and just take your time over it because it's really worth it it adds so much more flavor to the dish and as you can see the bottom of that pan is quite brown now and caramelized or burnt whichever way you want to look at it um, but that's fine because when we start to add liquid in that will actually just add to the flavor and then once um, all of the beef is done then we just need to pop the onions in and again I just gave it a few more sprays of oil there and um, I'm just mixing it all around just making sure that the onions get um, kind of nicely cooked uh, fairly soft they don't have to be cooked all the way through but just a little bit softened and to a nice golden brown 
because I did use so little oil, I'm just going to pop a splash of water in um, and that will help the onion steam as well. So help that process quicken. And also, as you can see, I'm now taking the brownness off the bottom of the pan and that's all mixing in with the onions. And again, that's just going to add loads of flavour. So again, take your time over this bit. Um, there's no rush. This is going to cook in the oven for quite a long time. It's actually going to cook for between two and two and a half hours. Um, so it's worth taking your time at this stage because really once it's in the oven, you've got very little to do. So when the onions are ready, so they're nicely uh, golden brown and they are starting to soften, then you just remove the onions to the uh, the tray with the beef and then we can carry on with the rest of the recipe. So I'm again adding a few more sprays of oil. I know it seems like I'm adding a lot but each one of those sprays is only two calories um, and it just helps with the process. So what we're going to do now is kind of make the gravy. So we're doing that as we normally would make proper gravy with uh, flour into the oil and then we're adding the curry powder, ginger and the sugar and we're just going to mix that all around and again because I didn't use much oil I'm actually just going to give that a splash of water as well to start the mixing process um, and once I've done that then um, I'll add the stock and we'll make the gravy. Now because I didn't use much oil here, actually, um, it took me quite a while to get the lumps out of this gravy. So I think uh, if I made this again, I'd probably sacrifice a few calories or have a few calories more and add um, maybe a tablespoon of olive oil at this point to mix the flour into in the first instance. Then, as you can see, um, at the end, what you're looking for is this really lovely, glossy gravy and the smells that were coming off this pan were just amazing. Um, so I'm just going to add now the Worcester sauce and give that um, a good old mix. And once we've done that, we just need to season it with the salt and pepper because the stock pot has quite a lot of salt in it already I'm not adding too much salt um, but I'm going to add a fair old whack of pepper in because again that just adds to this flavour profile um, in this loveliest of beef stews. Um, okay so once we've done that and we've mixed that around then we can put the beef and the onions back into the gravy. Um, as I said earlier, this needs to go into the oven for between two and two and a half hours um, in uh, the preheated oven, which should be set to 160 C, 140 fan or gas mark three. Um, mine took two and a half hours, but I did check it after two hours just to be sure because we don't want it in there any longer than it needs to be. We don't want it to dry out or anything. So finally, I'm just adding the mixed herbs and just stirring those through. As I said at the beginning, the recipe originally called for parsley um, and also there were button onions in there, but I couldn't get any of those and I haven't got any fresh parsley. So I just used dried parsley and a chopped up big onion and it worked fine and I wouldn't change it. I'm not gonna change this recipe now because this was absolutely delicious as it was. So just making sure that everything is mixed and combined properly and then we just want to bring this to a simmer and obviously you can see that by you can just see the bubbles around the edge. If you give it a stir and it's still bubbling then it's definitely ready. So we're popping the lid on and then we're putting that in the oven and then we'll have a look at it in two hours. So um, I'm serving this today with some carrots. Um, these are going to be roasted in the oven. I'm having these instead of potatoes because I'm just trying to cut down a bit at the moment. Um, and then we've got some Savoy cabbage and this is how I do mine. I just um, chop it into uh, slices, I suppose, and then steam it. And the same with the cauliflower. So this is half a cauliflower and half a cauliflower is absolutely the right amount for just the two of us when we're eating uh, it as a side vegetable. 
So this is the casserole after two and a half hours um, and the pot is obviously really hot. This pot's really heavy as well because it's cast iron but it's such a good pot. A few people have asked me about it and I got it originally from Tesco I think. I don't think they do them anymore but it, it, it's a great pot and I'd definitely buy more of them if I uh, saw them again in different sizes. Anyway so as you can see now that gravy is looking really really lovely and the smells again coming off this were just fan fantastic um, so I'm just testing the beef there and yet it, it, um, it, it pulls apart really easily so that's ready now and the last thing we need to do is just add the horseradish yeah. and we just um, pile that in and just stir it round we don't need to reheat it again the horseradish is not going to make it that cold um, and what I did when I did this was I just um, mixed the horseradish in and then just made sure that I put the lid back on um, so that the heat was retained um, yeah and uh, I think the flavour profile of this dish was just um, something I've never had before really. I think that's what attracted me to the recipe. Um, it was warming, it wasn't hot, it definitely wasn't spicy, but it was warming and it was just so flavoursome. It was just absolutely fantastic. This recipe is a definite keeper. So um, yes, yeah, so that's it really. There's the recipe done and here it is all served up. So this was my portion. So I served mine with roast carrots, with cauliflower and with cabbage. My husband had uh, mashed potatoes with his. Um, but as I say, I'm just trying to cut down on calories and carbs at the moment because I just uh, want to lose a few pounds. So this entire dish came to 400 calories, which is really good. Um, and the beef itself, the uh, casserole itself, came to 320 calories. So it just goes to show really that you can still like eat sensibly and carefully and still um, keep within a, a sensible calorific amount. I'll be leaving the ingredients down below if you want to give it a go. And if you do give the recipe a go, please let me know if you do. And I heartily recommend this recipe it was and I know I keep saying it I must have said it a hundred times during the, <laughs> the filming but it was such a delicious recipe it's a definite definite keeper this one anyway thanks so much for watching if you're already a subscriber thank you and if you're not um, there'll be a subscribe button coming up soon and perhaps you might want to click that and also the notification bell and that way you'll hear when I put um, other videos up uh, which is usually Wednesdays Fridays and Sundays so I do food hauls recipes and meals of the week anyway thank you all for your support thanks for watching I hope to see you on the next one take care bye bye